and good to see you. So it's amazing. We had a good week, right? I mean, everybody's pretty happy about the fact that we saw up arrows. And I said just a moment ago that the S&P had its best week in seven. But there's still so many concerns. And one on your plate that you're really watching is inflation. And the Fed is, too. Tell us more about the big picture. Right. So obviously earlier in the week, I know that seemed ages ago, we had some, you know, really disappointing inflation concerns and lowered growth concerns over inflation materials. And basically every commodity was near its, uh, uh, you know, 52 week high. Um, and I got a lot of questions about why are yields dropping? And they have been um, for, mo for most of this week. Um, rather than rising with all this inflation news. And it's really about um, uh, that, that risk assessment moving into less riskier assets like bonds, uh, therefore pushing the prices up and lowering the yields, uh, and moving out of equities. And we saw that pretty systematically earlier in the week where we saw the bond prices uh, go up uh, and the equity prices go down. Now, today is looking at the last two days have been looking much better. As you've been saying, we're finally getting um, uh, one of the more positive weeks for the markets. Um, and we've seen even some days where the market actually finishes up. We've seen a lot of days when the market goes up and then finishes down. So um, perhaps this risk off was just a very short term call. It was just mm -hmm. a two to three day event. Um, we're seeing a, a little bit of more buying on the dips, but yields are still going down. So I still think that we're seeing more a risk off of buying into bonds as we're all concerned that um, this is right. going to slow growth longer term for the next several quarters. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, you talk about inflation, that it's not going away. I also found your chat here in our notes about the small caps somewhat fascinating, somewhat of a conundrum, I think, happening when it comes to the small caps, because you might get tricked, think there's just so much value, as you were saying. Um, I mean, this week, the Russell was the best of the bunch. But tell me about investing. What would you say to investors about considering investing in small caps versus large caps at this point? Right. So that's another good question I've gotten is, so small caps actually are one of the best performers month to date uh, and this week. Um, but I'm not calling an end to their uh, trading range just yet. The small caps have been really just going sideways since the spring of this year. Uh, and when inflation is higher and interest rates ha are rising, which they are, I mean, the overall trend uh, for the past six months or the three months has, has, been, has been rising rates, um, that really penalizes uh, the earlier growth, the earlier stage companies much more. Uh, and generally their valuations quickly come down uh, as interest rates rise. Uh, and so you can see that, you know, we haven't broken out of that range. It, it's still hovering. It hasn't hit its spring highs yet, uh, a return to those spring highs. Um, and I, even though we've had a couple of good weeks, I think this is, again, going to be another issue where the small caps are, are stuck in that trading range and then come back down. Um, because uh, with inflation, um, they're much more exposed to higher capital costs. Uh, they're much more exposed to yeah. higher borrowing costs. Uh, and right. so they're the most vulnerable. And so I don't see the buy signal just yet. Do you see the buy signal for anything? I know you were talking about large caps and some concerns about forward looking PE and that, um, you know, that it's been declining. And so where should people invest? Right. So certainly the large caps are, are looking much more reasonably priced and, and there's some debate uh, about uh, since, uh, you know, earnings have been um, systematically underestimated for the past five quarters. And it looks once again that we're having these much larger than normal surprises. And, you know, so really is the forward earnings really 20 and a half times or is it really 19 if you adjust for estimates? But regardless, that's still high. Um, Pre-pandemic, um, the average was more around 17 times forward earnings versus 19. Um, so it's definitely not cheap. Uh, and so I'm not advocating buying the broad market just yet, even though uh, earnings have been coming, uh, the PEs have been coming down, basically because the earnings have been going up. Um, I really am very careful about what stocks uh, and really being selective that any stock I get into has a more reasonable price uh, and a more reasonable valuation that's somewhere close to its pre-pandemic, unless there's something really generally different uh, about its growth outlook.
uh, for that stock. Right. So um, quality and valuations are definitely something. So I'm very selective about what I get into here. Yeah, it's interesting. So you're saying you're not recommending buying into the market. Um, so what are, you, what are you recommending then? Wait, wait until when? Tell us. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I've been very uh, picky about stocks. I haven't been using a lot of ETFs, uh, but really being cautious about high quality. Um, but you know, certainly, if you're going to get into the S and P 500 after September's decline, it's certainly a better position uh, than you know. A, any other time if you do want to use a simple uh, ETF rather than doing a uh, selective stock picking. Uh, but I would say that, uh, you know, it's it's likely that we'll probably still have a bit more of a dip uh, towards October. Uh, and then perhaps, you know, we hit that sort of typical Santa Claus rally in November and December. Um, so if you are going to get into the S&P 500, get in before, you know, get in towards the, around Halloween. Um, it might be a recommendation. Do you think that's coming? You think that Santa Claus rally and a, some sort of pop is coming? Um, I, I, and, you know, I, we I, often see it, right? End of November or December sometime. And and we're on that track. Uh, def- yeah. We're on that track between earnings reports um, and, and, you know, unless it's just a massively disappointing uh, season, you know, based off of more of just the supply chain issues. Um, but we are still very much on that track for, for a similar type of rally. Yeah. And the holidays are upon us. I mean, yes. you had some thoughts about the supply chain issues. And so obviously everybody's going to shop early. We're going to be talking about this throughout the hour. Is there anything else that you feel like we should be watching closely? Is it really invest for the long term, maybe? Yeah, I think, you know, we all need to perhaps uh, with inflation, um, set your expectations maybe another six months out uh, as we digest. It's been difficult for Wall Street to be really good at predicting, as we've seen with estimates. Um, uh, Estimates have really been um, unusually low. We've seen much higher surprises, much higher beat rates. Uh, And so until Wall Street and everybody has a better sense of how we're getting back to normal, um, you might see an increased volatility, particularly as these inflation issues keep popping up and and we see higher rates. So, um, you know, I'd still say be just longer term. Yes, things look good, um, but this might take a little longer to fully recover.